Welcome back to the Great Nutrition Business Podcast. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated, which is why we focus on a simple habit-based approach. We know that helping your clients become the best and healthiest versions of themselves isn't just about what they eat or coming to the gym a few hours a week. We as gym owners and coaches have to focus on a holistic approach, looking at support systems, stress management, sleep, mindset, lifestyle, and of course, exercise and nutrition. I'm your host, Nicole Coyne, registered dietitian and founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring. I'm also the author of The Basics of Nutrition Coaching, CrossFit Preferred Nutrition Course. In this podcast, I'm going to teach you how to make one step at a time to becoming the best nutrition coach and building an awesome habit-based coaching program. Today's podcast guest is Lindsay McDonald. She's our chief of staff at HSN Mentoring and also our lead mentor. She's actually the first mentor I ever hired. She has so much experience with planning, launching, and growing nutrition coaching programs. Today, we are specifically talking about nutrition challenges. I think it's a great way to kickstart a nutrition program in a gym, but most gym owners make some crucial mistakes that cause their programs not to grow after the challenge is over. Today, we talk about how to position your nutrition challenge, common mistakes and pitfalls to avoid, then how to plan, launch, and execute a nutrition challenge. Most importantly, how to set your program up for success so that your support for your clients happens and continues long after the challenge is over. Please enjoy this podcast episode with Lindsay McDonald. We will get right to this episode after this message. Are you a gym owner looking to launch a nutrition challenge in the fall? Awesome. We have something super exciting to help you. On Thursday, August 11th, we will be launching a one-day challenge intensive. If you're an HSN mentoring client, you can join this one-day training for free, but this is an opportunity for gym owners and coaches to save time and not reinvent the wheel when planning a nutrition challenge. We will be giving you every single thing that you need to launch a successful nutrition challenge. Click the link in the show notes and lock in your spot for the one-day challenge intensive. This challenge intensive was approved for seven CrossFit CEUs. Hope to see you there. Lindsay, welcome back to the Grow Nutrition Business Podcast. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you today. I'm so excited to talk to you. So you have helped a lot of gyms run challenges. I think it's such like a bright and shiny object for so many Mm -hmm. gyms. And Mm -hmm. our goal with challenges is to help gym owners avoid these common pitfalls and mistakes that gym owners make like the challenge trap. You run challenges, people see great results. The challenge ends, the nutrition program ends with the challenge, and then people regain all the weight or go right back to their old habits right after the challenge ends. Yeah, it's, it's so common. And I mean, it's why I found you back in 2016, right? Because that's, that's what I was doing. And it's what a lot of gyms do. And I understand, right? But there is a better way, especially when we're trying to help our members see sustainable results for the long term, not just one month or two months of really great results and then no follow up. So let's really nip this in the bud and set them on the right path. I love it. So today we're going to talk about, you know, the goal of the challenge, common mistakes, and then Mm -hmm. planning, launching, executing your nutrition challenge. We're going to attempt to keep this in under 20 minutes. I don't know if we're going to be able to, but we're going to try really hard. So let's take a deep dive in. When we Mm -hmm. think like big picture, what is the goal of a nutrition challenge? So I would say the goal is really threefold, right? I mean, it's a great way to get existing members bought into your program and get them engaged, right? So that would be number one. Number two it's a great way to build a super strong ongoing coaching program because think of that challenge as that kickstart or that launching pad for a longer term solution. And I think my favorite, honestly, it is such a great way to get the entire staff on board with your program and really get them excited and speaking about your program in a consistent way. 
Yeah, I think that's a, I think a, a missed mark for so many mm-hmm. gym owners is they don't even think about, oh, all these other coaches that are in front of our members teaching classes. I mean, if they're involved with the challenge, they're naturally going to talk about it during classes and just be more confident when answering questions because they've seen it from experience. It should be an encouragement for every staff member to be a part of a nutrition challenge. Yeah, I mean, members want to do what staff are doing, what their coaches are doing, and what the owner is doing. When gyms go through the mentoring process, one of our main recommendations is to have the entire staff, coaches, owners, GMs, front end staff, be a part of that challenge because not only will they have, let's be honest, a great time, but they're also going to be able to speak better to the program at the end of it, right? Absolutely. You know, so many gyms will launch a challenge and then like the afterthought is, oh, how am I going to support my clients after the challenge is over? We have to go in with the end in sight. Like this challenge is a great way to kickstart a program, but the magic happens with nutrition after nutrition, ongoing support after a challenge is over. Let's dive into the common mistakes that gym owners make. I want to talk this first one, you know, pricing a challenge. I actually was just talking to in our like affiliate roundtable discussion group. We had, you know, the CrossFit set up these roundtables and one of the guys was like, yeah, I'm going to launch a challenge. I want to just get everyone, you know, on the same path with nutrition in the fall. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. He's like, yeah, I'm going to make it super cheap so that everyone's involved. And I'm like, man, let's think about this. What's your goal after the challenge is over? I, I don't know. I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, maybe we should start there. But if it's super cheap for someone to participate in a challenge, it is going to be very difficult for them to see the value in a higher price ongoing coaching program. You're setting your ongoing coaching program up for failure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and it's so hard not to see that when you haven't gone through it, you want as many people to sign up as you possibly can. And so I think that natural inclination is let's make this as super low barrier as we possibly can. But the truth is, is that if people are not financially committed to something, they're not going to hold themselves accountable, right? If they're paying 20, $25, that's low enough for them to just kind of ignore that and maybe not be engaged throughout the entire process. And then moving them to one-on-one coaching or ongoing coaching is going to be so difficult for them to see the value in that price point. Yeah. Cause they just got so much stuff for $25 or 30, whatever, whatever the price was. You know, I think the other piece is, is as a gym owner, you can't wear all the hats. So ideally, hopefully you've appointed someone to help support this role, even if you are involved, which is great. You know, you have to be able to pay that coach. And if you're not charging enough, you're going to, this challenge is going to end up costing you money because you have to pay someone to help support or you don't pay them. And then they're not happy because they're not being valued for their time. They're going to do a lot of work for free and they're not going to be happy the long term. And we want everyone to be happy. (laughs) Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think this second common mistake, I've made it. I think every gym owner has made it. It's the conveyor belt. And, yeah. you know, you, you do someone's biometrics, you don't have a chance to talk to them. You basically say, Hey, the challenge is kicking off on Saturday, September 17th. And from nine to 11, before the kickoff, everyone comes in and does their measurements. There's no appointment. You've got a lot of people waiting and now they're pissed off because they don't, no one likes to wait. Right. Yep. And then you're, you have no time to really get to know anyone and talk to them about their goals, what success looks like. And the logistics of this, if you think about the conveyor belt method, especially if you have a lot of people, you have multiple people doing measurements. And then when they redo the measurements, someone else is doing the post measurements. It's not like a true fair comparison. Yeah. Yeah. My first challenge was this exactly. It was 75 people and I was solo and I had 10 minute appointments over the span of two days. And it was not enjoyable for me as a coach. And it was not valuable for the members because there was no one-on-one conversation happening. It was, let's get you in as fast as possible. Let's get some measurements. Here's your handbook or here's whatever piece of resource I have. See you have a great time. Right? So it's really a missed opportunity to start to build that rapport and figure out what are they trying to achieve? Because we know it will not be attained in one month or two months. They're going to need a long-term solution. 
I think that's one of the big pieces of you know, recommendation and you know advice that we could give anyone listening to this. If you're doing a nutrition challenge, you need to talk to everyone participating in that challenge in a one-on-one setting about their goals, what they want to achieve long-term. Like if you were to invest your time, energy, and finances into your health, wellness, long-term, a year or two years from now, what does success look like for you? And then what do you want to accomplish in these 28 days, however long your nutrition challenge is? So we need to figure out, okay, long-term and then short-term and make sure it's realistic. If they come in with like, I want to lose 20 pounds in 30 days, you need to dial it back and help them understand what's a realistic amount. So you're setting these clients up for success. Exactly. Love that goal. We're going to definitely look to lose about four to six in a one month period. And then that gives us another few months to work towards reaching the rest of your goal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think another common mistake that gym owners make is they pick winners solely yeah. based on how much someone loses. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the furthest thing that you want when you are looking to run a health and wellness challenge. Cause you're really, your goal is to help establish a solid foundation of consistent habits. And if you're just rewarding people for what they lost, where is the, the reward for the consistency piece of it. Yeah, I think it's, this is a little dangerous in my opinion, because I think it, it would then speak to what your program is about, right? And this is definitely not a, you know, biometric based program. It's habit based a program. And I think if people see that the value is attached to how much they can lose, I'd, I'd be worried about people not doing safe things to, to just be named that winner. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I know people that move into ongoing coaching. It's not based on how much they lose in all honesty. It's about engagement and how consistent they are. And that's that's a really great measure. And that's what I would use to pick the winner by. Which means as a gym owner, nutrition coach, you need a way to foster the engagement with yeah. your clients. You know, if you're just using Facebook, if people don't have Facebook, then uh, that's not the best way. Right. If you're using an email chain or a Google doc, that's going to be a lot of things to keep track of. Uh, of Yeah. A lot of work for you. Hopefully you've charged enough to, (laughs) to get paid for that work, which I don't think you probably did. And then, you know, in the healthy steps nutrition app, you have this group feature where you can post videos and keep the group engaged. They can post videos, they can like things and, and different things. So you're, you're fostering this this group to support each other, which takes pressure off of you as a coach. Yeah, it's all, it's all in one spot. And what I love about it is that you're able to check their compliance rate on the habits. And again, going back to that, in my opinion, is the true measure of who's going to quote unquote, win a challenge is by how consistent they are. And that relates to how compliant were they with a specific habit, all which is tracked for you. So it's super convenient. I love it. The last yeah. mistake that I think gym oh. owners make <laughs> is that they make it too long. And yeah. the problem with making a challenge too long is that you lose excitement. And if you mm-hmm. lose excitement and you have fall off, it is very tough to convert people to ongoing coaching because they've lost excitement. That is personally why I love 28 day challenges in a gym setting. Uh, people are still super excited at the end. You book the final meeting at the beginning meeting. You give them an opportunity to upgrade their membership to to continue with nutrition, fitness, accountability. That being said, you know, we've talked a lot about employee wellness or going out into other companies and six week challenges for employee wellness, I think are great. And it makes sense to me because those people are with each other for eight hours a day. So if yeah. everyone is doing the same thing for eight hours a day, like all talking about health and wellness and, and they're going for a little walks during their break or during their lunch break, they're bringing in healthy food. They're all keeping each other accountable. It's not a bunch of distractions for people. Yeah. There's a high engagement rate at the end of those six weeks, but in a gym setting, 28 days is, is the ideal amount from all of the challenges that we've helped run. And I mean, to be honest, there's been thousands of challenges that we've helped deliver over the past seven years from all the gyms running our program. Yeah. And I think people do get excited to be in a challenge and they should be equally as excited to move into ongoing coaching. So month one, you're part of that group led challenge month two, right into one-on-one coaching to dial in those details. 28 days is that perfect timeline. 
I love it. All right, let's dive into planning, launching, executing a challenge. What are some Mm -hmm. tips that you have for gym owners and coaches who are like, okay, haven't run a challenge in a while, or, you know, summer is wrapping up at this point, kids are going back to school. Let's start planning out a challenge. We do recommend planning it six weeks out. So you have enough time. People need to hear things a million times before they take action. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to have the best engagement, you need, you need some time, but what are some things that you like to think about when it comes to planning a nutrition challenge? I really, so when I'm planning a challenge, I really want to think what happens after that challenge wraps up. So my main focus the entire time throughout that marketing is being as transparent and clear as possible that again, this is a stepping stone, right? When somebody comes into a gym, we'll say CrossFit gym, and they do an on-ramp program. My goal is for them not to do the on-ramp and say, that was awesome. See you later. My (laughs) goal is for them to have the skills and now have like the foundation that propels them into group led coaching. Right. So same thing with the challenge. So from day one, my focus and planning is to be as clear in my marketing that this is a stepping stone. We're going to do our challenge and then move you into ongoing coaching after that. For sure. You know, one of the things that we do during the second mentoring call as gyms are onboarding as we talk through a challenge, right? At this point, they've been through pricing and packaging. So we're talking about marketing and we have this marketing like timeline sheet where you mm-hmm. enter in the date at the bottom and it works back up to six weeks and tells people exactly what they need to do. I think that's like by far one of the favorite yeah. resources because it keeps people honest and on track of what they need to do so that they can have a successful launch. Mm -hmm. of their nutrition program. But one of the things I like to do is just talk about, all right, how much time is it going to take per person? And it's about an hour. If you take the 20 minute meeting at the beginning, 20 minute meeting at the end, the admin stuff, you know, about an hour per person, how many people can you feasibly work with? Let's set a goal for how many people you want to sign up for this challenge. And for a lot of people going through training, the, the goal ends up being like right around 40. I would say the average is, is right around 40 to, to sometimes 50 if they have two nutrition coaches and we'll bump it up a little bit more. I think that's a great way to get 40 people talking about your nutrition coaching program. Like that's pretty, pretty freaking awesome, right? You know, so talk about we're paying hundred bucks or, you know, each, for each person, that's great. Yeah. So on average, gyms are charging between 129, 139 for a nutri- 28 day nutrition challenge. And then after, after we set the goal for the signups, we're talking about what is your goal for conversion, right? Mm-hmm. So if you have 40 people sign up for your nutrition challenge, I would expect at least 20 of those people to convert over to ongoing coaching after your challenge is over. Why 20? Well, hundred percent of those people are not going to achieve their long-term goals while <laughs> during the challenge. But if you're doing it correctly, you should at least convert 50%. I think of Elena from Ireland. I think she converted like mm-hmm. 85% of her, one of her first challenges to ongoing coaching. If you're super clear and you have the end in mind, you should be able to, to convert people over to ongoing coaching to continue to support them on their journey. Yeah. I mean, that goes back to establishing what their goals were at the very start figuring out what, how, where, how far they've come in that challenge setting and then bridging the gap with that ongoing coaching program. So I completely agree with you. When gyms are going through training, I would say they're setting their cap at about 40 up to 50 if they have two coaches with a 50% minimum rate for expectation to move into ongoing coaching. It sets them up for success. For sure. So mm-hmm. they have that timeline they're mapping out. There's like the Canva templates for all the marketing, social media, the emails, the video scripts, all of that's in there. But the other thing that we want to look at is gaining people to like gaining engagement with local companies to sponsor your challenge. I think this is a really great way to have weekly prizes instead of just having a a prize at the end, having weekly prizes to give out based on participation is going to positively reinforce people to participate and do the habits. And I love going to local companies and being like, hey, you have an awesome coffee shop and I want to highlight some of the healthy options that you have, or, Hey, you're running store. We want people to be active and healthy. Would you want us to highlight your business? Would you mind sponsoring our upcoming nutrition challenge? I actually did this with a local in my, the key here is you got to go local, right? Like the higher, 
more chains you go, the harder it is for people to say yes, because they have like a lot of people above them that they have to get approval from. Mm -hmm. Um, But I did this with a local running store and he was like, yeah, you know what? In fact, we'll give a 10% coupon to every single person. And then we'll give you two $50 gift cards for uh, giving out during the challenge. I'm like, okay, perfect. Thank you. You know, if, if you can make a list of, Hey, these are the people I'd like to reach out to or talk to your staff. Maybe they have, you know, some introductions that they can ask. They know people and you don't go in just cold, cold handed with not knowing who, who you're talking to, but it's a great way to increase community engagement and also have weekly prizes that aren't costing you anything. Yeah, I think it's super smart. And right now, local businesses are would be so open to that additional marketing, right? One of the gyms that I talked to in the post-launch series, they partnered or they have a, a staff who also works in a sandwich shop, which is located right around the corner from the gym. So to them, that was a no-brainer. They have some really great salad bowls, some really great options there made that connection. They sponsored a week of their challenge. And what they did that which was, was super cool is they had a flyer at their restaurant. And so they were then able to advertise to a whole different audience that they wouldn't have reached otherwise. So it was really a win-win. Yeah. I know um, CrossFit be someone, Josh's team, they ended up getting over $700 worth of prizes donated for their upcoming challenge, which is really cool. And again, a fun way to keep people engaged and, and retain. If you're an HSN client, use, or you've done the nutrition challenge intensive, which is the reason why this planner exists, to be honest, because we, we did that challenge intensive last year twice, and we made it for that. And we're like, man, this is so cool. We got to give it to the mentoring clients because this is a game changer. Use that. It makes life so much easier. All right, let's dive into some engagement strategies. Obviously, one of them, the weekly prizes and like little mini weekly challenges. I'm thinking of Liz ran an employee wellness challenge and she did a really good job like doing other stuff that helped her her weekly challenges were like hey what else do you do for activity to stay active or what's something that no one else knows and just getting everyone engaged and talking to each other which was really awesome in addition to continuing with the healthy habits that they were working on each day Yeah. And even just like asking them questions or showing them in the app, things that she was doing personally to really lead by example, you know, taking one of the recipes they have access to and doing like a quick video and posting that in the group. And I think anything that you do in there to really stir up that engagement is, is so valuable because that is what people need. And that's what people want, right? They want that accountability. They want that engagement. They want that community support. Absolutely. You know, when you think about the delivery of your nutrition challenge. So many people try to change too much at one time and it ends up leaving people really overwhelmed. You give them meal plans or macros and they feel like they have to follow that to be successful. And you can help people so much more by keeping it super simple. You know, at Healthy Subs Nutrition, we focus on one nutrition habit per, per week. It might be the first week adding in vegetables for lunch and dinner. Second week, adding in protein. Third week, drinking at least, you know, 60 ounces of water, drinking water with every meal, like keeping it so simple and then doing other things like a stress management or mindset, you know, could be positive affirmations, a daily activity, you know, moving for 30 minutes per day and then also sleep. Most people do not connect the little amount that they sleep with the quality of their health and their life and really them ultimately reaching their goals or, or not reaching their goals. Yeah. And people don't look at the holistic framework, right? They look at what am I eating? And they just keep that in mind. And there's so many other factors at bay and you can be eating really well and and you can be moving, but if the other pieces aren't there as well, then you may not be seeing the success that you're hoping for. And that's, that's the role of the coach to really identify what those are and to really help support you through that. Absolutely. So, you know, planning your challenge, you really got to think about, all right, what are, what is actually, what are people going to be doing during this challenge? I think of other challenges like 75 hard, we're changing all of these things, like a laundry list of stuff to do. It's too much for people. And if you want to help them continue with you after the challenge is over, it has to be so, so simple. And so, realistic. Yeah. 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 One thing at a time. You know, one of the things that we didn't talk about yet is like launching the nutrition challenge. So, you know, when we go through that challenge training timeline, you know, we talk about, all right, what's your challenge start date? 
All right. Mm -hmm. And then typically the Saturday before you're doing a kickoff seminar, that is your pep rally, right? Like that is the time for you to get everyone excited. Keep it simple. One of the biggest things I could recommendations I could give for HSN clients is make sure everyone is actually in the app during that kickoff seminar. It is very tough to teach an old dog new tricks. And if you want to individually have 50 conversations with people after the challenge is over to get them engaged in the app, it is going to suck so much time from you versus everyone is excited during the pep rally. Everyone is in the app. They're taking a selfie. They're marking off a habit. They're watching a video. They can see everything that you want them to do every day after the kickoff seminar, like make your life easier and get them in the app before the kickoff seminar. Learn from our mistakes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You do not want to be wasting time of your actual challenge, then trying to get somebody into the app and learning and learning how, how to stay engaged with it. And you said something really important there. Make sure that they're there in person, right? I, it's so, it's hard to describe that, that energy that you get at this one hour event. Everybody's there. Everyone's there for the same reason to improve health and wellness, to really work on some really awesome habits. And if you do it virtually, which I know maybe it may have to happen like for some, but ideally we're there in person and feeding off everybody's energy. It is, it is incredible. Absolutely. I always do a, a shortened kickoff, um, like a yes. recording just in case people cannot make it live, then they can watch the recording after, but I don't advertise that because I really do want everyone to make it, <laughs> make it in person. Um, sure. Before the kickoff, you should have had individual meetings with everyone, those 20 minute meetings to find out what their goals are, short and long term goals, what success looks like for them, and just mm -hmm. doing all of those measurements. The cool thing is, if someone's goal is to run a marathon and then you've got another person's goal that's to run a marathon, why not try to connect them during the kickoff seminar and increase the stickiness here? Yeah, yeah. People love to have that support. And I think at the end of the, of the challenge, moving to ongoing coaching, it's like, are you moving on? Yeah, I'm moving on. Right. And they, and they want that support to stay. Absolutely. All right. So we nailed down planning launch engagement during the challenge. I think the biggest thing now is the, the wrap up. Okay. So you've done the initial meetings, the initial yep. meeting, you book the final meeting. That is key. People Always. who don't do that end up not having everyone come in for the ending mm -hmm. meeting, which is a mistake and a problem that you can easily avoid by having everyone book their ending a meeting appointment during the initial meeting. And then you're talking to them about where they're at, how far they've come to reach their short and long-term goals and how long they can expect to work with you to reach their long-term goals and what it, what it looks like. So yeah. we just have an option to upgrade. And if you don't upgrade them during that time, it is exponentially more difficult to upgrade them after. It is absolutely. But in the event of that, you do want to make sure that you have a follow up meeting with that individual because some people do need a little bit of time to figure that out, right? I saw such great, great success. And I think the most common thing I hear is, I can't believe how awesome I feel. That was amazing. And I think I want to try it on my own. And sometimes those people need to see that what they were missing the whole time is having that person in their corner. So if they do not immediately upgrade, that's fine. You book them in for an appointment about six weeks after, I would say. And typically that's enough time for them to see that they truly valued having that accountability person behind them. Absolutely. And it could be something as easy as a quick check-in call. Hey, yeah, just want to touch absolutely. base with you um, to see and just getting that, that down the books as well. When you are converting people over to ongoing coaching, you've got the initial three months package price. Your challenge yep. price is in the middle of your ongoing coaching rate. So initial three months are more expensive than the ongoing coaching rate. Mm -hmm. Your challenge price is in the middle. If people continue with individual coaching after a challenge, we let them continue with ongoing coaching. And the reason is you've already met them twice. They already know how to use the app. You're not spending as much time as you would for an initial three month commitment. And it's going to give them a benefit of committing now and moving to ongoing coaching um, after that initial challenge. Yeah, it really comes down to how much time you need to spend with that individual. So it just makes sense. And 
this is something I'm so transparent about with pre-existing members. So going back to the goal of a challenge, who is this for? This is why for pre-existing members, it's such a great option for them that instead of signing up for that three-month commitment in phase one, they go with the challenge first and move directly into ongoing coaching. All right. I want to talk about one thing because some gyms are like, I haven't run a challenge in forever. And other gyms are on the opposite side of that spectrum of, I run challenges every other month. What do you have to say to them? (laughs) Either is fine. I think what's really important is that you don't want to run too many challenges. You definitely want to make it more of a rare or exclusive event. I know, I believe HSNHQ does the one challenge per year. Most gyms max two challenges per year because I think you miss the mark on the purpose of the challenge if they're hosted any more frequently than that. Agree. So, you know, if you think about timing, typically... Mm -hmm mid January to early February is a good time. Like let people who are super excited about weight loss, which most people are, have a health and wellness, either activity, weight loss, something related to health, new year's resolution, let them try it on their own. Let them see they, it's very tough to do it on your own and be consistent and then come to you. So end of January, February is typically that good time. And then the fall. So when we talk about the fall, it it really is different between where you live, like your kids start school a lot later than we do here in South Florida. So we could start a challenge a little bit earlier. Our kids start, start school back the second week of August. So we can, when you're, your guys still have another month, I wish. Of, yeah. you guys still have another <laughs> month of summer at that point. So yeah. what you wouldn't want to do is run. I wouldn't recommend running a challenge in the middle of the summer because people are traveling and it's just tough to get them to stay on track. Like you want to make it so easy for people to stay on track, see good results so that they have a fantastic experience and want to continue working with you after the challenge is over. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, here up in Canada, kids go back to school after Labor Day. So typically a challenge starting a week after that to give parents a little bit of breathing room, you know, be able to get back to their new normal. So second or third week of September this year, I'd push it back a week later because, of course, we have our HSN live workshop. So I'll definitely be, you know, attending that down in Nashville. So, again, it's all about timing. You want to make sure that you have that full weekend that you commit to those individual meetings. At the end of the day, you just want to make sure that it's wrapped up before the end of October or November when people are traveling again for the holidays and it's just a little bit tougher. Like people need individual support during tougher times to stay on track so that they have someone to keep them accountable. They have someone touching base with them individually each week instead of this Mm -hmm. group engagement. So having it end, uh, you know, end of October, beginning of November, so you continue to work with people through the holidays would be what makes the most amount of stints. Um, Last year we started something and I want to plug it for a second. Last year we started something called the, the HSN one day challenge intensive. And I think it's worth seven CrossFit CEUs. I'm pretty sure. Uh, So it basically is one day where we run through every single thing and walk beside people who are joining live in a group setting, how to, plan, launch, and execute a challenge. We even like role play those initial meetings so that people feel really confident with the initial meetings and the ending meetings to convert over to ongoing coaching. Yeah. I mean, they got that support in that one day to effectively plan, market, and launch their challenge. It's so exciting. I'm actually talking to three gyms this week that were part of our very first one day intensive and we're gearing up to plan their second challenge. So it, they're super excited. I'm super excited. It was such a positive experience for everyone. It was so fun. We've never done any mentoring support outside of HSN mentoring. So that was the first time that we're like, all right, gyms are going to run challenges. They're going to screw it up. Let's help them not screw it up and yeah. <laughs> help them see good results. And it, it was really fun. The other cool thing is, you know, during throughout the HSN mentoring process, that initial training, the challenge like details aren't really discussed till towards the end of training. So anyone yeah. that was going through training or anyone that had been a part of our program could join this one day intensive and just like, start from scratch, clear the air, and just have everything that they need to plan, launch, and execute a challenge all in one day instead of like one hour here, one hour there. And then it's, you know, two weeks goes by and you're still at the same spot that you were today. Yeah. Have that one main focus, right? Which was super helpful. 
So we're going to, we decided we're going to do it again. Yeah. I'm super excited to do I, I love it. One day we're going to do it with you being here physically so that we don't have to be doing it through Zoom, at least our side one day. But we're going to host it on Thursday, August 11th. It's going to be a really great time for us to knock everything out and uh, help gym owners who are looking to launch a challenge in the fall. Everything you need. Uh, We also give you the templates and the resources and tools. So you literally have to do nothing in regards to planning your your challenge. So if you're looking for support with that, you're looking to save time, not reinvent the wheel when building a nutrition challenge for your members and having an option to continue with you after ongoing coaching, uh, definitely click the link in the show notes so that you can check out the details with that. And if you're an HSN mentoring client or going through training and you're like, I wanna join this one day intensive, I wanna hang out with Lindsay and Nicole all day, awesome. We'd love to hang out with you. You don't have to pay anything. You just need to register and we would love for you to join us too. Oh my gosh, it's going to be huge. Get ready to help a lot of people. Can't wait. All right. So if you're listening to this, please save time. Don't reinvent the wheel. Avoid all of the mistakes we talked about. Go back, maybe listen to all of this again. There are so many great nuggets in this podcast episode. So many gyms will launch nutrition challenges. And again, if we go back to the beginning, like look at the big picture. What is your goal here? I think we all opened up gyms because we want to help people make health a way of life. And simply giving them a fire hose of information for 30 days is not going to help them make health a way of life. It's a great kickstart, but you have to have the end in sight and how you're going to support them long after the challenge is over. So hope this episode was super helpful um, for you. Lindsay, thanks for joining, talking all about challenges. Thanks for inviting me. Highlight of my day. Hope you enjoyed that episode with Lindsay McDonald. She is such a wealth of knowledge when it comes to helping gym owners and coaches plan, launch, and execute nutrition challenges and ongoing nutrition coaching programs. If you are looking to save time and not reinvent the wheel, join us for that one day challenge intensive on August 11th, or click the link in the show notes so that you can get some more help related to nutrition challenges. Hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review so that you don't miss another episode. We'll see you back here next week.